Look at her. <laughs> Wait a minute. Look, Look at her. her. <laughs> Look at her. Oh. Look at her. Uh. Hello, children, and welcome to another episode of Look at Her, our show where we have our super celebrity guests look at queens they've played with, slayed with, or even laid with, Ooh. and spill a little tea. Mm, this tea is scandalous. Or if they have to, throw a little shade. Mm, but almost. most importantly, they'll tell us something that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Our guest today, I'm a very big fan. She is the first winner of Canada's Drag Race. She has been killing the game since she snatched the crown. What's her name, Priyanka? Hey, look at her. Yeah, look at her. This is surreal. From watching this show on YouTube to now being in the studio, Looking at her, mm -hmm. I'm honored. I gotta tell you, the thing is, when I watched the first Meet the Queens of Drag Race Canada, oh my goodness. I picked you out as the winner you knew. immediately. I said, oh, that's the winner, and honey, I was right. You were so right. I was right. Do you have a track record of predicting the winner? No, no not at all. all, but I could feel it emanating, feel your star power emanating from the TV. That's incredible. And I knew, and then you'd, you'd prove me right. Yeah, I, I, I won that show. It's crazy, yeah. I didn't win a lot in life until I won Drag Race. <laughs> yeah, then and then all the wins started happening. Then I said, you okay. won it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tax free. Mm, oh, yeah, I forgot about mm. that. Oh, thank you, Canada, for being perfect. I love, love you, Canada. Can I love Canada. I love Canada. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, baby. Now, Priyanka, you know how to play this game. I do know. So I'm nervous to see who you put on the screen. <laughs> oh, well, you'll see yeah. all of your worst enemies. Oh, my God, because I, I got stories. <laughs> if you pick the right people, I got stories. Oh, no, uh, now it's my pressure that I do yeah. wrong. <laughs> Anyways, I'm ready to talk some shit. All right, let's do this. Look at <laughs> It's okay. crazy. Every single interview I do about come through, someone's always like, so how do you feel that that bitch stole your spotlight from the uh -huh. song? And I was like, I feel fucking incredible about it. Because, uh -huh. like, when, well, first of all, when, when she recorded the verse, I was in the room and I was like, this shit's going to go viral. Right. How, how could it not? Yeah. And she had left to do UK versus the world. And when she came back, she called me and was like, shit, I, I got sent home first. Mm. And I was like, don't worry, baby. We have your viral verse. We gotta come through. And it, 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 will, it will happen for, 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 for you. And it was so cool to see that the success of this song for her was a, a, such a great moment for everyone to see how much of a star she is. Because when she was on the season, everyone was like, oh, Lemon's gonna win this thing. She just has a fucking verse that'll come through. She's the queen. So when they, she got kicked off, it was like, everyone was so shocked. She was like, I don't even care because like people now see me as a musician. She loves to rap and like yeah. she had this big win before that big like loss. And, and I, I just remember, it's good karma for her because I just remember in those like, when we're not supposed to be talking backstage at Drag Race, she would always come up to me and be like, you're gonna win this thing. I know, I know you are and I'm here to support that. No matter what you need. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm here. And I was like, that's so selfless for someone to be in this competition for $100,000 tax free yeah. to be like, you're gonna win. Like, who does that? No one. Nobody. She did it, and she killed it. That's my best friend. What was the night like recording that that famous verse and recording come through? So, okay, the funniest thing about it is that we sent her, the producer at the time, sent her a, hey, this is what we think your verse should be. And Lemon was like, what kind of hokey pokey shit is this? <laughs> and then, like, scrapped it and then rewrote that to the verse that you know today. Wow. It was amazing. She just came in for, like, an hour, did, did it twice, and was like, okay, see ya. And we're all like... This is the best thing I've ever heard ever. Yeah, it was amazing. Love it. All right. Look, Look at her. Oh my God. Wow. She's beautiful. She's so, that's a great photo of her. <laughs> Where is that photo even Brooklyn from? Brooklyn Heights. I think that's from Mount Olympus. Wow, she looks rich. Now, did you know Brooklyn Heights before Drag yes. Race from the scene? So like, I never worked with her. I started drag quite later right. in life. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I knew of her as like the queen who like went to America to work at play in Nashville, mm -hmm. I think, right? Right. And it was like, wow, everyone wants to be like Brooklyn Heights one day. And that was all of our goal. Like Brooklyn is the queen. Uh -huh. And when I finally got to meet her and, and she was the first ever Canadian queen on Drag Race, which is so fucking cool. And I'm happy it was her because she was so good on that season. 
it was like, she was so supportive. Like she was just like, yeah, like I, every time she was in Ontario, I'd open for her. She'd always make sure that I had a slot at any of her shows. Wow. She was very, very, very supportive. Um, and yeah, she's amazing. Look at her. Now you guys have gone on tour together since the show. We have right? gone on tour together. So yeah. then you got some real sister time with her. What's your favorite memory of Brooklyn Heights on tour? The first tour we ever did together, like right when I won Canada's Drag Race, mm. we fucking partied. Yeah. Hard. Uh -huh. Drinking all the time. <laughs> we got fucking wild. And she can she, you can't tell if she's drunk or not ever. Really? But she holds it together. Uh-huh. And she is the queen of the north. I'm not. I mean, I'm glad you could clear it up here. I came here to the show to tell everyone that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I love her. She's and very... you featured on her song. I did. Oh my God, I forgot about that Queen of the and North. And is it true that you wrote something and they were like, can you not say yeah. something so mean? <laughs> I, what did I say? If um, if you're the queen, then where's your crown? Is mm, what I said. Oh, bitch. Well, wait I, a minute, wait a minute. Shit! <laughs> I literally, they called me and they, they were like, it's a dual track. It's like Priyanka versus Brooke. Like, who's the queen of the north? So I wrote a diss track. Uh huh. You know, like, I, I said, like, must believe I'm not afraid of heights. Uh -huh. Bitch, I'll take you down. Right. If you're the queen, then where's your crown? Like, I thought it was a diss track. And then they were like, um, do you mind just like being a little bit nice? To <laughs> like, hey, Priyanka, we're going to want to provide a united <laughs> front, okay? <laughs> and like, whenever you win a big show, everyone's all, always like, your ego, you know, your oh my god, your head's getting so big. So that is one of those moments where, where it was like, okay, so you need to calm down a little bit. Yeah. I was like, what? I don't know yeah, I forgot about that, but she is incredible and she is amazing. That's my queen. All right. Look, Look at her. Oh my goodness. I Gone forgot. but not forgotten. No, I mean, <laughs> I someone asked me the other day, well, like, was he actually as mean as, as as they made it him out to seem? And like on the record, Brooklyn and Stacey were just as mean as he was. Right. Like, they all made us feel like shit. <laughs> um, Jeffrey, like, I don't want to blame it on the edit, mm -hmm. but they did put a, little, a, a few extra sound effects. <laughs> yes, they did. You know, they did put a little, you know, a couple of things, but he was fucking catty and it was so fun. Like, it was just one of those things where, like, on set, we would laugh about it because like that's what made the show fun. Yeah. So when the fans were like, how dare he? And like, we hate him. And like, they were so meet me. It was so, so intense. intense. It was, it was wild. It was also, everyone was so hyper-focused on it because of, um, yeah. what's it called? The pandemic. pandemic. What's it called? We were all sitting at home living every moment living. on Canada's Drag Race. Yeah. And Jimbo fans are like also wild too. And he, like Jimbo, you know, the, the, the fashion is different. Jimbo stuff now is amazing. But at the time it was like pretty rotted. It was. <laughs> Mine too. I mean, I wore a paper for dress and got to the finale. I don't know how that happened. But um, he is great. That was definitely like, do you, that was harsh. The audience was harsh to him. I mean, like, yeah. like has anyone watched Old Drag Race? The judges uh, aren't all peaches and cream every time or any reality show. I know, it's really interesting that like, I think part of it was that the fans need someone to bully. Yes. He was a target. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think that like, in a time of everyone feeling very negative about their life and what, what could be with the pandemic, I think everyone was like personally attacked by the yes. comments made by the judges during our season. I mean, and uh, the rumors were that producers were kind of pushing them to be a little more cunty. Did you catch that? I heard, the, or? I heard those rumors. It, it was very like you'd get five good comments and uh -huh. then five bad comments. Mm. So whatever made the edit made the edit. Right. And that was kind of the Wild West, too, because it was the first outside the country it was one. It was, it was wild. different, right? It was so wild. What did... Uh, what a very nuanced experience. Because I've been on set for season two and three. Yeah, and three. And it's like vanilla bean frappuccinos now. Oh my God, it sure is. It's just like, okay, everyone's nice. Everyone's perfect. We have a winner now. But when we did it. Oh, they were coming I feel for like, you. Yeah, I feel like old <laughs> grandma now talking to the contestants. Be like, well, back in my day. My day. They used to tell me that I look old, like an old lady. <laughs> an old lady makeup. Oh my goodness. But it was amazing. Jeffrey Boyer Chapman. I mean, thank you. God bless. Thanks Jeffrey for the crown, Jeffrey Chapman. Chapman. We understand it's not easy to be attacked by such a fan base. So no. Blessings on you, my yeah. child. All right, speaking of people with rabid fans, look at ah! 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 Scary. Oh, Jimbo. My goodness. Jimbo is the funniest, most iconic person I've ever met in my life. Like, period. 
I remember when I, I saw, like the reason why Canada's Drag Race was as popular as it is, is very high, 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 high percentage because of Jimbo screaming on that mountain in episode one. Right. Like that, yeah. watching Jimbo walk into that w- workroom, I was like, people are gonna watch the show. Mm. There's just something about Jimbo. Um, the clumsiest person ever. Really? <laughs> oh my God, so fucking annoying. Like Tainomi Banks yelled at Jimbo so many times <laughs> to get Jimbo's shit to get together. And like a little nasty, like a little mm. mean in a very it fun like way. A stab yeah. here and there, a little zing. But it's, it's I, uh, I find it so fascinating because I think it's so funny. Like Jimbo wants to win and Jimbo wants, like I remember seeing Jimbo in UK versus the world and like finally meeting RuPaul. And like my, I wanted, I was crying for her because I was like, this is the best thing ever. But when she got sent home, you saw that, that mean spirited mm-hmm. person come out. But I loved it because I've been watching interviews with her and she's like, yeah, of course, if my dream is crushed, I'm going to be upset about it. And I was like, I love that. That is a real feeling. And I texted her being like, that was actually inspirational because a lot of the time it's like, if you lose, just smile through it. Right. But I love the idea of like, feel your real feelings and, and show people that like, feelings are, are real. That's my clown. Jim, I, I love mean, you. Now, what do you think about the criticism for the, boobs? From, for the boobs and for like saying like, Jimbo stays mocking women. Like, what do you think of that? I think it's kind of, I, I, I see where it comes from. Like mm-hmm. I think that those are, those conversations are like important to have because mm-hmm. like you should we should be listening to all those things. But I, I think it's a little bit too much. I think what ends up happening is whenever some whenever some people see someone soaring into the skies and being so unapologetically themselves and and bringing their drag and being so celebrated for it, there is always the dark side of it. My personal opinion is that like it's just drag and like it, it's it's. If anything, it's like paying homage to the beauty. Uh, that's of how I feel. This type are of the body. homage to their big titty women are very beautiful. Yeah, and exactly. And we, wear flip flops and wear a bikini to the beach. Totally, yeah. So that's how I feel about that. Well and said. And I looked at her. Looked at her. <laughs> Look at her. Rita. Rita Bagger. Oh my God! Remember when Jimbo totally took down this wig? No, it was like your lace line is crunchy. It looked like you flush your head down a toilet. It looked like an old lady. Your hair looks like barf. That was the best moment. Like imagine you were front row. I was for that. front. I was front row, and I was like, going to be in the bottom very clearly that week. <laughs> and they're arguing, and I'm like, what about me? I'm having the midlife crisis. I quit my fucking job to be here, and you're right. saying Rita's wig line looks like barf? <laughs> what the hell is going on? Rita Vega is. I mean, a class act. I love that she became a winner in her own right as well. Yeah. Like she rules Quebec. I mean, and she now rules Belgium as well, Belgique. Oh yeah, she hosts Drag Race. Another Canada's Drag Race getting the most hosting gig of them all. We love to host. We love to host, we love to say welcome to the program here. Yeah. I think she's amazing. I've gotten very fucked up with Rita Vega. She loves to drink and party. And not anymore, actually. Now, now we're all so different. Uh-huh, because you have so many responsibilities. Yeah. Now Everybody's every, watching. Everyone is watching all the time, but back in the day, we used to get lit, but not a, a, anymore. She's Did amazing. Did you know her before the race? Or kind of. Because you were in different cities. I knew of her, mm-hmm. but I never, ever, like, met her. I think I, 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 cro- I, I like, crossed paths with her once, but it wasn't until the race that I actually got, got was to, Was like, she considered her. legendary before she was on? Because in yeah. Quebec, she was I thought the she was going to win. Mm. We were all convinced. You're like, yeah, well, she's gonna win. There were so. a lot of heavy hitters on that season. Yeah, it was a really great season. I was convinced. I, I was like, yeah, they'll probably give it to Rita. That seems to make sense to me. And then all of a sudden, it was me. It was you, baby. Uh, all the legends. All the legends. Come no, for the queen. They couldn't come for the queen. What's a memory with Rita Bag on set that maybe we, you know, we don't know about or we didn't see on TV? I remember when I was in the the ball challenge where I made my paper dress uh-huh. in front of Michelle Visage. That's scary. <laughs> Yikes. Um, I actually was like, do you think that this is a good design? And do you think that this is gonna work out? Like, what should I make the cage out of? paper mm-hmm. and then she was like yeah and I was like oh, okay great so there I was fucking like cutting bristol board up like uh-huh. putting together this cage skirt thinking on Beyonce uh-huh. and I remember after being like doing the classic design <laughs> challenge thing when you're in, when you think you're going to be in the bottom being like but you didn't tell me it was bad right like why wouldn't you tell me why didn't you tell me girl yeah girl. What the hell's, what's wrong with you that's happened to several people on drag you know, race but they didn't, they didn't air it so I didn't look like that girl because they you know they did I, I did get into the finale, by, by God's grace. I got the winner at, at it, thank God. 
But I remember wearing that paper dress. I still get the shivers whenever I see that paper dress. What was it like having Michelle Visage come in? I mean, it was like your one piece of America drag race. RuPaul wasn't there, but they sent an emissary. Yeah, they like sent like a secret service agent. That's what it felt like. Yeah. It was like, it was amazing because it finally felt, there was a lot, the reason why the cast was so unhinged is because it, it was like the parents had left and, and, and Brooklyn was our cousin that was babysitting us. Right. So we're like, what, what the fuck does Brooklyn know? Like, who cares? We're gonna fucking just like be crazy and un unhinged. And like, even when Jimbo looks at Jeffrey Boyer Chapman and is like, this isn't glamour. Like, you right. would never say that to RuPaul, you know what I mean? No, you so would like, not. there was a little bit of like unhingedness to all of us. Mm. You're like, da, 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 da. so when, when Michelle came, it was like, Mama's home. Oh, boy. We gotta be on our best behavior right. now. She's so, gonna tell RuPaul. She's gonna tell Ru, <laughs> yeah. And we, we we were still hoping for a RuPaul like surprise appearance at some right. point because we weren't sure how it was gonna work right, then. because it was all brand new. Who knew? Could have been anything. Exactly. And I remember when she was there, she was so serious, but I respected the fuck out of her because she treated, it felt like she just treated us like she would the American girl. She wasn't like, what the hell is this like backyard Canada bullshit. Uh -huh. She like judged us and gave us great critiques and was so nice. And she said I was the prettiest that night. Oh. Fuckers. Look at her. Look at her. She looked at her. I love Michelle Visage. She did. What an icon. All right. Who's next? Look at her. She's icy, spicy, a little <gasps> bit pricey. Denali! Your girl Denali. Oh my God! Um, okay, now a couple things. Girl Denali. One, um, we might not have you without her right. showing you Drag Race after a certain gay dodgeball game. Yes. Uh, tell me Which about it. Which um, Right, it wasn't just an excuse to suck people's dicks in the bathroom after the game. I actually joined dodgeball thinking it was going to be that, mm -hmm. but they were very competitive and, and took it very seriously and <laughs> no one was let, letting me do what I wanted to do. Right. I thought I would like meet the love of my life and there and everyone was like throwing balls at me and like hitting me in the face and I was like, this is not fun. <laughs> this is too hard. I hate I thought this. this was I was already bullied fucking. in high school. I don't need it here. Right. You know what I mean? But I met Denali there. She this is before she was Denali. Yeah. And she was like, hey, do you want to come to like a viewing party? And I was like, for what? She's like, RuPaul's Drag Race. And I was like, oh, I've never seen that show before. And she was like, girl, you're gay. You gotta come watch Drag Race. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. And I immediately, like, it was episode one of season nine. So Sasha Valor, Shea Coulee, Peppermint, right. Trinity, like Valentina, feel like all these amazing queens. Obviously fell in love with it, like, hello. And then it was like she became, we, we became friends based on both starting drag kind of at the same time. And she like watched me rise in Toronto. I watched her rise in Chicago. And then before I knew it, she was on Drag Race. And now she's like, her placement doesn't matter. She feels like a winner. All right, now, look, look at, at her. her. Ooh, Miss Couture. Isis Couture. She's Couture. Look at this fucking airbrush on this fucking photo. Wow. <laughs> Cartoon, anime. <laughs> she is, does Dragon not Ball Z. exist. That is not a real, she didn't even stand there for that photo. <laughs> that is she, a wasn't, she didn't even come to the set. I mean, she must have spent so much fucking money on that versus the world. What did you think when she left the damn competition a day before I don't it was understand. about to be over? I love Isis Couture. She's an artist in its truest form. Like when she feels, she feels. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like when I talked to her before, they asked me to do Canada versus the world. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. Good idea. <laughs> you, you agree with that? You need something bigger. You need something, you can't no. just do a seven contestant season Maybe. and uh, for six episodes, honey, we need a, a 16 episodes of Priyanka taking it to the top. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, so I, I was shocked that she, she said yes to doing it mm. because I was like, this is, she deserves to be in a different ring because she's such a fucking icon, such a fashion icon. So seeing her kind of like go on the show, be iconic and then kick herself off the show, I was like, this just feels like not right. But what I will say, it was really cool seeing her gain more fans mm. from the exposure of Canada versus the world because it, it did solidify her as, as more of a fashion icon, which I yeah. think is great. Like when you send yourself home, that show doesn't do that to you. It's kind of like people are like, well, whatever, she gave up. Yeah. People really like got behind her and really support her, which is cool, so. 
I she, she was really bringing it hard all the way through that competition. Yeah. If she hadn't eliminated herself, who knows what could have happened? I know. Which what? I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about eliminating yourself. How did you feel about her season? It was you were you were the winner. You were watching it. Did you think she was the correct winner? Who else did you think was hot on that season? I think it was between her or, or Pythia. Mm -hmm. Like when I saw Pythia's like two head look and it went viral, so I was like this for online fandom would make sense as the winner. Mm. Isis is a winner too though because she's consistent and she has all the wins and she's just a great all around queen. So yeah. I, I would say both of them, I, I was down to see. Who was the third girl in there? Oh, Kendall. Kendall. Yeah, I would yeah. say, uh, yeah, the two of them. Wow, if they had brought you into Canada versus the world, that would have really been a, quite a battle. Um, but we don't need you to do that. We need you to win Global All-Stars or whatever the hell you Yeah. Saying. I'm a winner, baby. Yes, baby. Uh, okay. Now, one final one to look at. Maybe be. you'll see her in person one day. Look at her. Look at her. <gasps> ah. The queen. Now, have you actually met her yet? Never. This is a crime. Yeah, it's kind of weird to think, right? It's very weird. It's like a weird, a lot of people have to have assumed that I've met her. But will this, will, will current drag con, as we're filming this, a drag con approaches in Los Angeles, is that going to be the moment? It might be. I mean, I prefer the moment on camera. Uh -huh. I am a RuPaul child, you know, don't, yes. don't do anything unless the cameras are on. Right. Um, but it, it would be amazing, but I, I would like to like perform for her or, or like show her a runway or something. Like, I, I don't want to just be like, hey, how are you? Right. I want to like. You don't see want her just to just ride her bicycle around drag no. con and be like, "Hey, ring, ring, bye, yeah. gotta go." It'd be cool for her to see my drag and tell me if she likes it or not. Yeah. Huh? She's got to be aware of what you're doing. I think so. She loves music and she's been always supportive of gay artists and yeah. gay videos. So I feel like Maybe she's, she's a, watched. I think she's a come through queen. I think she's a come through queen. I mean, she she knows Lemon, so she's got to know you. Exactly. That's what I think too. All right. Well, we're we're gonna we're gonna pray for your moment with RuPaul, with RuPaul wow, that'd be so in wild. real life, and hopefully with her judging you on a, yes. an all star type. Just situation. looking at me, Always. looking at her, looking at her, like, her looking being at you, her being me. Yeah. Wow. Uh, gay Jesus, let's just take a prayer right now. Please, Priyanka has worked so hard and she has served it up in videos, like, she's oh doing TikToks, she has kept the franchise moving in Canada, <laughs> she's come back every single time, she's doing everything she can, please let her meet RuPaul and drag her and have a real moment. Please, gay God, Jesus. Thank you. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> That's how one ends all gay prayers to gay Jesus. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Priyanka, thank you for being here, This is here, so baby. great. What an honor. I mean, I'm so happy to meet you. Your work ethic is incredible. You're so fun, and I'm, I'm so grateful you came on the show Yeah, no, thank you. You're such a great host. Honey. You got the tea. I like gotta you got to do what I got to do. You got to do what you got to do. Congratulations on the show. You're I'm fabulous. happy the show is finally fucking back. Well, it is. We're back, bitch. We're back by popular demand. Uh, and uh, thank you for letting me look at her. Honey, you're the best. We love ya. And if you want to see even more with Priyanka that we couldn't fit in the episode, go to patreon.com slash TV for all the exclusive tea. Priyanka, you are the best. And you better come through again when you're in town again. We'll get you after Global All-Stars, All Winners, or whatever the hell you do next. Whatever the fuck I do next, yes. But whatever you'll do, I know you will serve, and I'll be a fan. Love ya. Thanks, love lady. Ya. Thank you. And thank all of you. We'll see you next time on Look It Up. Hit it. Woo. Woo. Thank you. Yeah. Look It Up. Look at her. Look at her. Bye, y'all. Love you, Lady Red. Look at her.